So how did you sleep last night? If you had a rough time, if you're feeling tired, lethargic and grumpy, I understand. I know what it's like because I've just been part of a remarkable and very revealing experiment to find out what happens to us when we don't get enough sleep. I had to stay awake for nearly 40 hours. In a moment, you'll see what a mess that made of my brain. And what's more, it might give you some insight into why teenage kids can be so hard to handle. But even more startling are the long-term effects. They show, without doubt, why we can't live without a good night's sleep. I'm driving as if I'm over the limit. But I haven't had a drink in days. Sorry, mate. Shit. Sleep expert Dr Drew Dawson has kept me awake for almost 40 hours in an exhausting experiment. Whoa! Whoa, whoa, whoa! The aim? To prove the disastrous consequences of not getting enough sleep. Lack of sleep can kill you. It could kill you quickly in a car accident, or it could kill you slowly through diabetes, obesity and heart attack. It's the difference between good and bad health, life and death in many circumstances. But generally we don't even think about sleep. Good sleep is like good sex, it's only a problem if you don't get it. <laughs> good morning Adelaide, rise and shine, time to get up. Oh, the revenue report. Like millions of Australians, 24-year-old Courtney Semler gets by on too little sleep. Hello Nova, it's Courtney speaking. Courtney's a PA at Adelaide's Nova FM and from first light she's on the go. Most adults like Courtney should get about eight hours sleep. How much sleep do you get a night? Um, probably six hours, seven hours is good but probably about six hours a night, yeah. That's not much. This is the world we live in though. <laughs> You've got to try and fit everything in and life's busy and got to keep moving up the ladder and being successful and doing everything so yeah it's just just the way you live these days. What we're going to do here is try and test your balance particularly when your eyes are closed so if you could stand on the platform. But like me Courtney's about to get a serious spaces. wake up call. Courtney what we're going to do is uh, insert a glucose sensor into your tummy. She's joining me in a dramatic experiment at Drew Dawson's University of South Australia sleep lab. You've got to think about this, don't you? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so what are you testing for, Drew? Well, what we're testing here is speed and accuracy of your brain working. And what we find is, is that as people become more and more and more, and more tired, their brain slows down, in effect. The old expression, my brain feels like jelly, is a really good way of explaining what happens to people at 4 o'clock in the morning. Over coming days, both of us will be closely monitored and both of us will discover just how badly our thinking, our reflexes and even our health can be affected when deprived of sleep. Hey Courtney, sleeping? <laughs> I'll be kept awake for 40 hours straight, but Courtney faces an even longer haul. Two days and two nights, 60 hours in all. It's now pushing towards 4.30 and the fight is on to keep awake. It's five o'clock now and I'm feeling really, really tired. My eyes are heavy, so I don't know how I'm going to get through another day, another night and another day. What we're trying to do is simulate the effects of long-term sleep deprivation, like that experienced by a new parent, a shift worker or a long-haul truckie. I've been awake now for 25 hours and that's on the back of a full day's work and uh, I'm uh, feeling very tired, battling that swaying feeling and indeed I'm fighting that need to go to sleep. I could go to sleep right now. But that's part of the study. Drew, what on earth is happening to me? Well, I think as you've seen this evening and early this morning, your brain slowed down, you're making more mistakes, and I think inside your body there's a whole bunch of changes taking place as well. I can feel my reaction times deteriorating. I can't do the test, add up the numbers ac accurately after a lack of sleep. What's it matter? Imagine you were calculating the dose on a drug 
for a patient as a doctor working in casualty or you're trying to calculate the length of a runway landing as a pilot coming in on a difficult landing. All of a sudden those calculations are the difference between life and death. And I'm about to discover that firsthand. Courtney will stay behind in the lab, eventually going another 36 hours without sleep. But I'm being tested out in the real world, at a racetrack. I'm doing what I know I shouldn't be doing, behind the wheel of a car. I've been awake for 30 hours, but strangely, right now, I feel OK. It may be witches' hats on a test track with a safety driver beside me, but I'm horrified at just how out of control I am. Uh, drifting, drifting, whoa. Oh, Peter. I can barely drive in a straight line. And when surprises are set up to test my reaction times, I barely see them. If they've been kids on a crossing, God forbid. So, Peter, what happened? Well, I hit the I saw them hit the brakes hard, and um, I, know, I thought I did a good job. Have you noticed your speech slowing down? Oh, yeah. I've been slow the whole way. Was there a moment where you saw it and you thought, I should be doing something and it wasn't happening? Well, no, I didn't even have a thought like that. I just... I feel... <laughs> I feel really um, slow. I mean, I don't know, is it like driving with a few beers under your belt? Twice the legal limit. Cool. So twice the twice, legal limit. Twice the legal limit. The difficulty for most people is that the one time they learn that lesson is when they're hitting a the tree. Okay, Andrew, I'm just going to flush that um, gelco out for you. Andrew Davies didn't hit a tree, he hit a parked car, and now he's a paraplegic. Andrew was so exhausted after working for 10 weeks straight that early one morning on his way to work, he fell asleep on a motorbike. Can you remember the moment you shut your eyes on the bike? Yes, I can. I can remember the moment I opened them and saw the parked car as well. It felt like a second. Now much of Andrew's life is spent in hospital and the man who loved his job as a toolmaker will never work again. I didn't realise the effects of just having four to six hours sleep a night would, would do to me. And no matter how much money you're earning, it's not worth it. it if you end up in a wheelchair. And look how quickly your life can change. Watch as this driver's eyelids droop, only to wake up when it's too late. Amazingly, this guy survived, but just imagine if he'd been at the wheel of an oil tanker. Because lack of sleep is now being linked to some of the world's biggest catastrophes, including the Exxon Valdez oil spill of the 25th Space Shuttle mission. And the Challenger Space Shuttle disaster. Fatigue is the last frontier. It's the poor sleep led to poor judgment that led to what underlies some of those real major disasters. <laughs> I feel like I've hit a brick wall and I just want to curl up somewhere and sleep and my eyes keep closing, but I keep getting woken up. <laughs> not just sudden accidents that are the killer. Lack of sleep also kills you slowly. And back in the lab, Courtney's body is now shutting down. We have a very significant increase in her glucose levels. She's entering her third day without sleep. Her blood sugar levels have plummeted and she's binging on fatty foods. <laughs> What happens is the brain, after you've been up for 50 hours, says, I'm exhausted, I need energy in order to function. So Courtney's dietary preferences has shifted away from green fruits and salads and healthy food towards foods that are high in sugar, high in fat and high in immediate levels of energy. Alarmingly, by the time Courtney finally finishes the experiment, after nearly 60 hours, she's showing the first signs of diabetes. Evidence that lack of sleep could be contributing to the nation's sharp rise in this disease and many others. If we were to look at this clinically, we've aged her five to 10 years in terms of her glucose response and her diabetic status compared to somebody who's fully rested. She's on the road to diabetes? 
we see a link between sleep loss, obesity, diabetes, and then going on to cardiovascular stroke and those kind of illnesses. And I always thought it was just good exercise and good diet. Well, I think now, as our grandmothers told us, we have to add a new one into that, get a good night's sleep. What have you learnt then about sleep? Fighting the, um, the closing eyes and the heavy head and I don't, want to feel, I don't want to feel that anymore, so if I'm tired, I'll go to bed. <laughs> but it's not just the adults who are ignoring the warning signs of sleep death. Those most affected may actually be teenagers, kids like Alana Daniels. Alana, what time do you go to bed? Well, I normally go to bed at 11, but I definitely can't get to sleep until maybe 1 o'clock in the morning. Like many teenagers, 15-year-old Alana goes to sleep late and can't get out of bed in the morning. Every night I'm frustrated and I'm thinking to myself, just go to sleep, it's not that hard, just close your eyes and go to sleep, but I can't. And I try, but it doesn't work. So I'm either tossing and turning or thinking about something or messaging my friends. So you're not in a good place, are you? <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> Alana, come on, we're going to be late, hurry up! Alana's mum, Sharon, wages a battle every morning that many parents know all too well. Come on, Alana, we have to leave in five minutes! Hurry she up. used to always get up, she used to be the first up in the morning and she would be downstairs and ready for an, an hour before it was time for her to go to school because she never wanted to be late. Lock the door! I did! But science is discovering that kids like Alana aren't just lazy or rebellious. Who feels tired right now, feels they need more sleep? Mm. Everyone. Mm. It's now clear that teenagers' many, body clocks are set on a now? different sleep cycle to the rest of us. They get tired much later and need to sleep longer. But unfortunately, school timetables don't allow for that. What do you do when the alarm goes off? Press the snooze button. <laughs> How many teenagers have sleep problems? Adolescents are one of the most sleep deprived groups of our community. They are seriously sleep deprived. What's important for you guys is that you really need nine and a quarter hours of sleep. You really Adolescent sleep expert, Dr. Sarah Blunden, says this dire lack of sleep is seriously harming our teenagers' ability to learn. We believe that parts of our sleep are actually important for consolidation of memory. In fact, if we don't get those particular parts of sleep, you don't remember things as well. You can't consolidate your information. You also have major problems with your behaviour. You're more likely to be depressed, more likely to have mood problems, more likely to be aggressive and irritable, and take risks more often. To most of us, the answer to this epidemic is pretty obvious. But in the rush and scramble of daily life, we're forgetting one of the simplest and most important ways to stay healthy, and even alive. I think people wear lack of sleep as a badge of honour because of what they think that signals to other people in the community. If I'm not getting much sleep, it means I'm hard working, that I'm motivated, that I'm more likely to succeed. Now we know the research tells us exactly the opposite to that. It just affects everything, you just don't realise. Having gone through this, do you think you'll now get more sleep? Yes, and I, I I'll try and get as much sleep as I can. I don't ever want to miss my sleep again. <laughs> Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.